Life is one of the most powerful and complex processes that humankind has ever known. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to program life as we program computers? I know, that sounds like science fiction, but it's not. In the last 10 years, synthetic biologists have been trying to implement in living cells exactly the same functionality that we can find in digital circuits. And of course, all that work was not in vain. Nowadays, we have software tools like Cello that are able to generate the designs of genetic circuits based on specifications of digital circuits in very large format. Last year, Cello was the key tool used for the publication of an article in the science magazine where researchers were able to design, build, and test more than 60 different circuits implementing a variety of Boolean functions. For every different design produced by Chalo, the researchers were able to get the DNA structure put in a cell and perform well lab experiments. Then they analyzed the data that you can see here and basically compared that data to the information predicted by Chalo. Those in red are the predictions of the low values and those in blue are the predictions made by Cello of the high values that are expected to be seen in the wet lab experiment. As you can see here, the black are the information from the wet lab and although it's not exactly the same as predicted by Cello, uh, because we have a small shift here, the organism is computing the correct Boolean function. Among those 60 circuits designed and tested in the wet lab, only 75% actually performed as expected, while 25% computed a different Boolean function. For instance, for this circuit, in this particular combination of inputs, the wet lab data shows that the output was actually low, while the prediction was high, so the circuit is not implementing the correct Boolean function. So the question is, how can we improve the quality of the designs of Cello? That was our starting point, and our working hypothesis was the first one that the current model used by Cello is not powerful enough, and that's why we're getting designs that don't work in the living cells. And our belief is that there must be a hidden biological phenomena that is causing this. This is the workflow used by the researchers in the paper. Basically, they use Cello to generate the designs, and then they build those designs and they tested those designs. What we propose is the incorporation of a new module to the Cello algorithm architecture that basically filters design generated by Cello into different categories, expected to work or expected to fail. We want that model to be able to learn from the wet lab experiment data. So we frame this problem as a classification machine learning problem. It's worth noting that in another field like electronic design automation, this same strategy of using machine learning in order to overcome the limitations of the models used during design is being used. The first step was defining how we were going to generate the machine learning model. In a classification problem, one wants to classify objects of the real world. In order to do that, features have to be defined and labels have to be defined. Features are basically characteristics or property of those objects in the real world that one wants to classify, and labels is the assignment of those objects to different categories. In our case, those objects are the circuits. And to get the label information, we just checked the article that was published because based on the wet lab data, we can say whether that circuit failed or not the experiment. A circuit design generated by Cello can be seen from a high level of abstraction as a set of basic components interconnected in a specific way, or it can be seen as a DNA double strand. For this project, we define the features based on this high level of abstraction. Each circuit is represented by a binary vector that encodes which basic components are used in the circuit. For instance, this circuit is using seven basic components and that's why its feature vector has seven ones. We automatically generated feature vectors based on the cello designs using the paper. Just to give you some idea of the distribution of the feature information, this histogram shows how many times each basic component of the biological repository was used in a circuit. Note that almost every component participated at least once in a circuit that failed. We split our data set in 60% training data and 40% testing data. Among the algorithms we tried, the best performing one was SBM with linear kernel. 
So that was the chosen to be incorporated into Cello and Garuda. Using the Cello Analyzer through Garuda, a user will be able to first generate multiple designs for the same Verilog file. It will be able to train a machine learning model using wet lab information from real experiments, and it will be able to use the predictive model to check whether a particular design is expected to work or not. Currently, the prediction page is fully functional and the rest of the features are still being developed. For more information about this project, check the description of the video. Thank you so much for watching.